Well, I've been kind of hacking around systems since, uh, as far as I can remember, since I was 10 or 11 years old. An ethical hacker typically goes about doing things the same way as, you know, a black hat or an unethical hacker. The difference is, really, they use their powers for good. More often than not, businesses will have strings of vulnerabilities within their networks or their infrastructure or their web applications, and they generally don't know that these vulnerabilities exist. So we will point them out for them. We'll try to break into the applications or break into their network from the outside, and once we are successful, we will show them how we did it, and then we can work with them to fix those holes before the hackers get into them. The dark web is really a community of websites that exist on different mediums of the internet, really. It's, it's almost like a second level of the internet that are anonymous by nature and can't be accessed via a normal web browser. The dark web operates on something called the Onion Router, which is a otherwise known as Tor. Um, Tor is, works as a traditional web browser and provides access to a marketplace and wealth of stolen information and cyber criminals, goods and services. You can go on and purchase anything from a stolen credit card number, stolen identity information, hacking as a service or even malware as a service, how-to guides on how to hack businesses and how to set up hacks, and uh, really pretty much anything you can think of. Tor can be accessed to use um, sites on the clear web as well as the dark web. The way Tor operates, once we go to a, a normal website like the Traveler's website, the connections are actually starting with our own computer and then they're hopping through France, Italy, and then the UK as well before finally making it to the main Traveler's website. That's done so that we actually can't see where the connections are originating from, keeping the browsing completely anonymous. Some of the other forms of data that can be found on the dark web uh, include uh, tax information, medical records, anything that can really be used to commit fraud against the person or to generate some sort of revenue. There are also sites dedicated on the dark web where individual vendors sell stolen eBay credentials, PayPal credentials, and even credit card numbers in bulk. More often than not, you'll find a lot of stolen W-2 information or social security numbers around tax season. But anything really that can be stolen from companies, including uh, names, usernames, passwords, email addresses, um, addresses, date, dates of birth, and anything along those lines, it's all readily available. A fair amount of information that ends up on the dark web does so from various data breaches, which you often hear about in the, you know, in the news or you read about in the newspaper. More often than not, there are vulnerabilities within websites that allow them to be compromised and those vulnerabilities are often as, as simple as just a, being a click away. A lot of vendors on the dark web actually sell malware and exploit kits, which you can then package and then redistribute to companies, and unsuspecting users will just open an email, for example, and infect the company, and from there the data is just exfiltrated out. There are literally thousands of guides and tutorials available on the web for either hacking or committing some sort of tax or identity fraud. Combine that with any type of stolen W-2 information and it's literally a one-stop shop for cyber criminals. Spear phishing attacks are fairly simple to conduct. The knowledge gap required to actually conduct these attacks is getting smaller and smaller as the tools become more readily available. An example of spear phishing would be sending out a malicious Microsoft Office document, such as a Word or Excel document, that's been infected with some sort of malware or virus. The user or the victim will open the email attachment, and by doing so, the hacker will actually gain access to their system, so they've been hacked just as easily as opening that document. Even if criminals don't want to conduct the attacks themselves or learn how to do the attacks themselves, they can just as easily go on the dark web and hire someone to set it all up for them and conduct the attack for them. I think one of the most important things to, to get across is that I, I would say 99% of all hacks come from either reused passwords. I mean, so many people just use the same password on you know, LinkedIn and MySpace and Facebook and so on. So once one site is compromised, then they have your login information to go to another site and another and another. So I, I'd say, you know, don't reuse your passwords. You know, the other thing is security awareness training for employees is probably, you know, the next biggest thing. Making sure your employees are aware of, you know, what spear phishing attacks look like, you know, how to stay away from them, what emails not to open, when to not open attachments and things like that. I mean, those are probably the two most important things at this point. All businesses right now are under the line of fire. It's absolutely important that businesses protect themselves and some of these tips can be used to help